Hi, I'm Davidas, Python developer at Oxlabs. Uh, today I will present you our Scraper API features. To begin with, let's look at our agenda. And on the list, we have common Scraper API features. Uh, we will cover those. Uh, afterwards, we will move on to integration with Scraper API. And we'll finish off with some web crawler and scheduler demonstration. So common Scraper API features. We understand that uh, web scraping comes with a lot of nuances, obstacles, and pitfalls. And Scraper API aims to cover almost all of these. Um, and we understand that integrating with a new API service provider can be a difficult task, uh, considering all the endpoints and features. So what we did is we have created the Scraper API's playground, which is now available at your Oxlabs dashboard. And you can use this to explore our features. Uh, and actually, we will use it today to, to dive into the features and uh, see what's going on. So let's hop into the Oxlabs dashboard to check out the playground. Here, uh, I'm already logged into my account, uh, so that the process will be quicker. And here on the left, we have Scraper API's button, which brings us to the playground. And uh, you know what? I'm feeling kind of hungry. Maybe we should look for some pizza uh, in Google Search. I can go to uh, Surf Scraper API and search for some pizzas nearby. And uh, to do that, I set the query parameter to pizza nearby and send a request. And in a matter of seconds, we have received a response from Scraper API, which is in JSON format. And it includes the precious HTML file we wanted to scrape. And here on the left, we see a nice little representation of uh, how the script HTML is rendered, would be rendered on your browser. So that's nice. But you know what? Uh, the geolocation here is set to somewhere in the middle of the United States, and that's not what I want. Say I want uh, pizzas from New York. For that, it is no problem. We can go to the geolocation parameter and set it to New York. And that uh, will make Scraper API uh, re request Google search um, with uh, results localized to New York. And uh, in a few moments, we will see a new response here with results being localized now to the New York. That's, that's amazing. That's what I'm looking for. But not, not precisely. Uh, you can see that there are at, at, at least 10 results here or something like that. And I want a bit more. Uh, for that, Scraper API has this limits parameter I could set. And uh, I set limit to 100. And this will, for, this will force Scraper API to request Google with up to 100 uh, search results. And just like that, we have up to 100 pizza places in New York. That's that's very nice. And uh, yeah, this will be plenty of, of pizza places for me to choose from. But now we need a pizza cutter. And for that, let's go to, to the Amazon uh, search source. And we will type in pizza, pizza cutter in the query parameter, similar to what we did uh, with Google. Google search API. And uh, now we have received an Amazon response with uh, tons of pizza cutters, and that's that's very convenient for us. However, the, some of us may not like the, the fact that return response is in raw HTML format, which may be inconvenient for us to work with. And for that, Scraper API offers this dedicated parsers feature, which we can turn on by setting parse parameter to true. And what it does, it's, uh, it simply parses the HTML page into a struc nicely structured uh, JSON document. And here we sent another res uh, request, and in the response we see all the precious information neatly parsed into a JSON uh, structure with all the prices, ratings, descriptions, and uh, etc. So that's amazing. You know what? Uh, thinking about pizzas made me wonder if I could become a pizza chef myself. 
maybe we should go to the eBay and look for some uh, pizza ovens to see how, how costly it is to become a pizza chef. For that, I have this uh, nice URL prepared here, with, uh, which, bring, br which brings us to the eBay search page with uh, query uh, pizza oven. I will put this in the e-commerce scraper API in the other domain section as a URL. And I will send the request. And uh, in a matter of uh, seconds, we should receive the response. And as you can see, it's, it looks very similar to what we have seen in the browser. That's, that's very cool. And uh, yeah, I've, sh I've shown you just a couple of, of the features that Scraper API offers. However, there are many more of them uh, you can find in our documentation. And I highly suggest you going there and reading through the features because the list is big. And uh, the features include like user agent uh, type setting uh, where you can set whatever layout uh, of HTML response you want, whether it's desktop or mobile. You can uh, enable JavaScript rendering, which will uh, make Scraper API load some JavaScript content, including valuable data that is not accessible in the initial HTML file. And also there is a session reuse feature uh, where you can set your session ID to make the requests, uh, multiple requests, uh, to Scraper API consistent, and uh, the results will be of the same session. That's nice. And uh, yeah, as I said, uh, all of these features are available at our documentation. OK, and now that we have covered some basic uh, Scraper API features, let's move to slightly more advanced ones. And for the demonstration, let's spin up Postman, where we will observe the such features as browser instructions. OK, so what you can do with browser instructions, you can instruct Scraper API to execute some JS actions on the open browser window. And uh, to explain it further, let's look at the example I have here prepared on my Postman request. Uh, it involves setting this parameter to you know, source parameter to universal, uh, setting URL parameter to eb.com, which means we will scrape the main page of the eb. And we want uh, JavaScript rendering enabled by setting render parameter to HTML. And, uh, and finally, it comes to the browser instructions where all, all we list all the actions we want to execute while scraping uh, eb.com. And in this example, what we are doing is we are inputting text pizza boxes in the search uh, input field. Uh, we click on the search button and we wait uh, a few seconds uh, for the browser to properly load the, the page. And uh, I can quickly show you uh, I can quickly show you how it would look like uh, on the browser. Here, the browser would go to eb.com, it would enter pizza boxes, and it would click on the search button here, wait five seconds, and return back the response. So if we, if we go back to the um, Postman, let's open up uh, the response headers where we will find job ID. And uh, I can use that job ID to, re to retrieve the result. And I have this nice little CLI tool prepared for me, which will open the result in my browser. And as you can see, it looks quite similar to what we, we have seen on my browser. And that's, that's, I find this feature very useful for some particular edge cases where the data is not easily accessible on the, the, on the initial HTML uh, document. And uh, also, there is important notice that browser instructions uh, aren't as a functionality is not live yet. However, if you subscribe to our social media or our newsletter, we will make sure to notify you whenever the, the functionality is live and ready to be used. 
Moving on, we have uh, another feature called custom parser, which accepts um, parsing instructions that can be used to extract valuable data from the HTML document. So as an example here, I have a scraper API job prepared with some parser instructions. I can show you what page we will be scraping, and it's an EB product page. What we want to achieve is to scrape the product title here, um, the price, and the condition of the product. So let's go back to Postman. And here the job definition looks similar to what we had previously using browser instructions. But now what we do is we set the parse parameter to true and uh, define list of parsing instructions. And by sending a request with uh, this job definition, we can see that we will receive results with pri uh, parsed price, title, and condition. The first thing to note is that parsing instructions uh, structure look very similar to what the results will look like. So for example, I have the, these price, title, and condition keys on the root level of JSON object, and that's, uh, that's represented in the result as well. So if we look at how the price is parsed here, for example, I have a list of, func uh, of parsing functions defined inside of the price field scope. And uh, the first item on the list is a function definition, which is xpath1 function call, which is used to select a part of the HTML document. And I also pass in some arguments uh, as xpath, xpath queries as arguments, and there are multiple of them. And the reason behind that is that in case the first one fails, you can fall back to the second one and try parsing the, the element again. And of course, you can pipeline the functions, meaning uh, you can execute them one after another. And the second function on the list is amount from string, which takes the text, searches for numbers in it, and extra extracts the first found number from it. And as you, as you can see, the result is here, nicely formatted, formatted number. Uh, other fields uh, are parsed very similarly. Uh, title here uh, uses CSS selectors instead uh, XPath queries, and condition is parsed using XPath, XPath queries expressions uh, as well. All right, so now that we have covered the uh, common scraper API features, the question may arise, how do you integrate Scraper API to your infrastructure? Scraper APIs offer multiple integration methods, and uh, we categorize the integration types uh, into two major ones, uh, being synchronous and asynchronous integration. And with synchronous integration, uh, the principle is uh, quite simple. What you do is you send an HTTP request to Scraper API. Uh, it processes your job uh, in the foreground. And as soon as the result is available, uh, Scraper API will return the scraped document as an HTTP response. This means that uh, during Scraper API um, processing, you have to hold a HTTP connection. Uh, one of the synchronous uh, integration methods that Scraper API offers is real-time. Uh, on the screen, we can see the example of the request that you would make to real-time endpoint with the payload to scrape Amazon search page. As you can see, job definition here is very similar, or I could say the same to what we have done with on the playground when trying to scrape the pizza cutters from Amazon. And just like that, you should receive the scraped HTML of Amazon search page. Real-time works particularly well when requesting, requesting and the result saving is uh, closely tied in your infrastructure. For example, the same service is responsible for both actions. And also, it's very good uh, when it comes uh, to receiving the results as fast as possible. Real-time will not hold you and return back the result, result as soon as it is available. 
another integration method is proxy endpoint integration, which uh, works uh, very simply. What you need to do is you send HTTP request to the target website you want to scrape. And the only thing you need to do uh, to your request is set proxy to Oxlabs provided endpoint. And uh, that's it. Now, proxy endpoint uh, is particu particularly useful when uh, you are sending complex requests, such as uh, post requests with, uh, with the body or any regular HTTP request, with, including cookies and uh, headers. Now, moving on to the asynchronous integration methods, uh, the idea here is uh, simple. What you do is you send an HTTP request to Scraper API. It will uh, return the response immediately. A response will contain job ID that you can reference uh, later on to retrieve the scrape, Scraper API result. And one of more popular uh, asynchronous integration methods uh, is the push-pull method, which I briefly descri described you just right now. What you do, send request get uh, job ID, and uh, after Scrape API, API processes the job, well, you can retrieve the result uh, from another endpoint. Uh, here on the screen, I have example of how the push-pull request to Scrape API would look like. And uh, the structure and the idea is very similar to what we did with real-time. You specify source uh, you want to scrape, you enter query or URL parameter, and you can set any other Scraper API features with other fields such as geolocation, user agent type, browser instructions, or parsing instructions. And push-pull I find best uh, when it comes to sending large amount of requests, like when we are talking to in hundreds of requests per second, and when there is a clear separation between uh, request sender and results downloader and uh, saver in your infrastructure. When there are multiple services that handle this process, push-pull is your choice here. And push-pull is uh, very nice when it comes to more advanced features as uh, all of them are available using this uh, integration method. Now, other similar to push-pull integration method is batch query, which is almost the same except for one difference is that URL and query parameters can be used to set up to 1,000 queries or URLs at once. This means that with a single request, uh, Scraper API will create up to 1,000 sc uh, additional Scraper API jobs and uh, process them simultaneously. And this is very useful when you need to send as little requests as possible in your infrastructure. Um, now that we have made a request, uh, a synchronous request with, uh, to the Scraper API, you may wonder how you could better retrieve the results. Because the most simple uh, method would be to poll for the results, meaning that you would uh, periodically send an HTTP, re HTTP request to Scraper API and check if the result is available. And when it's available, you download it. But uh, that may not be convenient for some of us, and uh, for that we have introduced the callback service. Uh, and the idea of the callback service is that uh, you specify callback URL in your job uh, description, and Scraper API will post a notification to the target URL, to your specified URL, whenever Scraper API has finished the scraping your target page. And this is uh, very neat when, as I said, polling for results is not suitable, and results are needed as fast as possible. Again, callback service will not wait until, I don't know, anything. It will post the results to you as soon as they are available. And with a surge of uh, cloud-based infrastructures, we have noticed a demand for the results uh, to appear in our clients' um, cloud storages. And for that, we offer uh, 
functionality to uh, for you to be able to save the result to your S Amazon S3 bucket or Google Cloud Storage. And to do that, you set storage type to S3 or GCS for Google Cloud Storage, and you specify your Cloud Storage bucket URL. And uh, as I mentioned, this works very well with cloud cloud-based infrastructures. Now that we have uh, covered the integration methods, I would like to show you some other features, such as web crawler. What web crawler does uh, is is that it uh, traverses through your target website, uh, selecting the preferred URLs and scraping them and aggregating them into chunks of useful data. Web crawler is particularly useful for market research content aggregation, lead generation, or sentiment analysis, and uh, data monitoring as well. And to show you web crawler in action, I will jump uh, into the Postman. Uh, to initiate the web crawler job, I first need to specify the URL I want to start uh, crawling from. So here we are working with the eBay search page with the query pizza oven. Uh, the same page we have scraped before. And uh, here in the filter section, I will specify which uh, pages I want to crawl and which to process. Now, both crawl and process URLs uh, will be crawled, but the difference is that processable URLs will be included in the results and the crawlable URLs will not. In our case, uh, both regex patterns are exactly the same, uh, and this means that the pages we crawl will be included in the result. Uh, now, there is also this max dev parameter, uh, which indicates how deep we want to traverse uh, into the website. In our case, what it will do, uh, it will paginate over 20 plus pages on this eBay search page. It will go to the second page, third, fourth, and so on. And now also you can set some additional scraper API parameters in the scraper AMS field. We, what we do here is we set user agent type to desktop. Also we have this output field, which we can use to set up the type of uh, scrape results. In our case, it will be of HTML type. And finally, what we can do is we can set uh, a cloud storage bucket to be, to, for results to be uploaded to. So in our case, I've set it to my uh, Amazon S3 cloud storage. Web crawler can take uh, quite some time. Uh, so I've already run this uh, web crawler job with exact same parameters. So let's check it out. You can reference your web crawler job uh, by specifying the job ID in the URL and uh, by sending a request to Scra Scraper API endpoint, you will receive all the information about the web crawler job, including useful links, events that were fired, and uh, some basic statistics about the uh, crawler job. Uh, also, there is uh, this sitemap endpoint, which can be used to check where the web crawler has been to. So in our case, as expected, it has been to up to 23, uh, I would say, yeah, 23 um, eBay search uh, web pages. And that's pretty cool. But uh, you know what? You may ask a question. What, what if I wanted to crawl through the eBay search pages, like this one on the screen, but uh, instead of processing the search page, what if I wanted to process the product page? Meaning that on every search page, web crawler would uh, open up the product page. In that case, we have to change the process parameter slightly. And here in Postman, I have another web crawler request prepared where you can see the difference in process URL pattern. In our case, we now specify an item URL pattern, 
which will make web crawler crawl search pages and process only the product ones. Also, I've set the max dev parameter to two as the, there will be plenty of product results from two pages. And I've also run this sample job uh, previously. So in the response, uh, we can see the web URLs uh, our crawler has been to. And this should include both um, item pages. You can see a bunch of item URLs here, as well as uh, search pages, where there should be five of them. But do note that the results uh, will only include uh, URLs that match the process pattern here. So Webcrawler is uh, very useful when you want to systematically gather data from your target website in a bulk. Um, however, say that you want to do that periodically to the exact same URLs. For example, you have a set of, uh, I don't know, e-commerce products and you want to track the changes in prices or ratings of them. Uh, for that, web crawler may not be that good because you may get inconsistent results uh, because with each uh, web crawl, uh, different listings may appear in your search results. Uh, to solve this feature, you could utilize our other feature called scheduler. So what scheduler does is very simple. It takes your scheduler job definition and it sends requests to Scraper APIs with uh, all of the items you, you want to scrape. Now, Scheduler is best for monitoring changes in various sources, such as uh, prices in e-commerce or stock markets, uh, and changes in rankings and uh, search engines or brand popularity. And it's also very useful when you are monitoring status changes, for example, when you are looking for that employee for, for a, half, a half a year and it finally opens up for job positions, uh, Scraper API can notify you about that. And to show you scheduler in action, let's spin up uh, Postman again. Here in Postman, I have a few scheduler jobs already prepared for us. So let's look at the first one. Uh, the definition of scheduler job is very simple. What you need to do is, is to specify the interval at which we will trigger Scraper API jobs. So here we do that with the cron parameter using cron notation. Uh, in our case, we are specifying that we want to trigger scheduler every minute. And uh, here in the item section, we define scraper API jobs that we want to trigger every minute. In our case, what we want to do is to scrape ebay.com product page and start the results in my S3 Amazon bucket. And the last thing we need is to specify the end time at which uh, the scheduler will stop processing our jobs at the regular intervals. So in our case, it's December 1st midnight. So when you create a scheduler job, you will similarly to web crawler receive a schedule ID, which you can use to reference the schedule. And as the schedule may not have been triggered for this one that I've created just now, I will use a another schedule to show you this very useful endpoint called runs, which will list all the scraper API jobs that were triggered by scheduler. It also includes job ID of scraper API, uh, which you can use to retrieve results or just debug stuff. Scheduler can also be combined with uh, almost all of our scraper API features, such as parsing instructions. Here in a different scheduler job, I have another definition where I want to scrape eBay product page, parse the result with my cus customly defined parsing instructions, and store the result in my Amazon S3 bucket. As you can see, these are the exact same instructions I have used in my previous demonstration. 
So with this final demonstration, I will wrap up my presentation. Uh, I thank you a lot for staying with me and uh, I, I remind you that all of these features are nicely documented in our public documentation available at developers.oxlabs.io. Make sure to check those out uh, and I'm sure you will find some features that will benefit your business uh, a lot. So again, thank you and I'll be answering some of your most common questions in the comment section right now. Okay, so the first question is, which integration method is the best? <laughs> well, there is no single best integration method because it really boils down to what you're trying to achieve. For example, uh, I usually go with the real-time uh, synchronous approach because uh, in my normal workflow, uh, what I want to do is to send a request and uh, immediately get a response. So this works very well for me. But uh, if I were to send uh, more complex uh, post requests with a lot of cookies or headers, I would definitely choose proxy endpoint. So the next question is, can I try Oxylabs web crawler for free? Absolutely. Um, all of the demonstrated features are available if you choose any of the web scraper API or e-commerce scraper API trial plans. Okay, so moving on, um, the next question is, what is the difference between a web crawler and a web scraper? Well, web scraper is mostly responsible for scraping single pages, and uh, web crawler actually uses web scraper to scrape the target website um, systematically, meaning that, for example, Web scraper can be used to scrape a single product or search page, and the web crawler can scrape the entire website uh, search page or product category page section. Okay, and the next question is, uh, what is the difference between XPath and CSS selectors? Well, they both serve different purposes. Uh, XPath uh, are used in XML query language, and CSS selectors are used in styling the, the HTML documents mostly. But uh, they both can be used to reference parts of HTML document, and it comes uh, in very handy when it comes to HTML document parsing in our case. Uh, okay, so I think it will be the last question I'll answer. But if you have any more questions, make sure to go to our Oxlabs Discord channel where I'll make sure to answer all of your questions. And again, very, I'm very thankful for you uh, for staying with me and hope to see you soon.